Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about SQLite, which is, I guess, my favorite database engine. Uh, I'm going to talk you through what it is, how it works, and why you may or may not want to use it, because uh, it's not it's not universally applicable, but it is pretty nice for a lot of situations. I'm also going to show you the basics of getting started with it, as well as some quick little tips for the command line. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so what is SQLite? Uh, SQLite is a very small database engine. Uh, you can basically build it into a single C file. It doesn't actually show up that way in the source, but uh, they build what's called an amalgamation where they jam all the C files together. So it's really easy for you to include it in your application. Uh, it is a flat file store. So it stores all of its data in a single file. Uh, and it's really easy to embed it or put it into applications. I guess I should say it could also store it into an in-memory database. Uh, for instance, if you do SQLite colon memory colon, I think it is, uh, oops, SQLite three, right? Uh, this will be a temporary in-memory database rather than storing it to disk, which might be useful if you're doing like, I don't know, uh, like a, a full text search, which is one of the features that uh, an extension of SQLite has. Uh, you might just create the in-memory database, run a full text search on it, and then blow away that in-memory database. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe use this for tests or something. Uh, but it works just like any other uh, database engine. Create table, I don't know, what, uh, with some value in it. Uh, insert into what values one, select star from what. You know, it's, it's a database engine. It has tables, uh, you can do you know, inserts, you can do joins, you can do most of the things that you would normally do in a database. Now, some of the types are a little bit wonky. I seem to remember a lot of it devolves to strings, and so it's not you know, the most time-safe database, but it's pretty darn good for most things that you would need a database for. Um, so this was in an in-memory database. Let me do this with an actual database file so I can show you what that looks like. Uh, create table wat a insert into wat values one and then you know select star from wat. Okay, we have it. We have a database here, and you'll see that it's created this file here. And if we use the file utility, it will tell us this is a SQLite 3.x database, last written blah blah blah, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but basically, it stores all of its data in this file here. You can run commands on it directly using the SQLite uh, command line. So if you do select star from wat directly here, you can see we can get values in and out of it. Uh, and it's it's basically a database engine. Now there are a few things that I sort of didn't show here that I wanna call out explicitly uh, because there's a few commands that are really helpful for working with this interactive utility here. Uh, the most important one and probably the one that I run the most often is the schema command. This will show you all of the tables and views and other stuff that's in your table or in your um, in your database. Uh, if you uh, want to show headers when you're selecting stuff from things, so like you can see here we did select star from wat, it only showed a one here. There's a dot headers on, you do select star from wat now, you'll see that we show the column name here in our output. This can be really useful when debugging, uh, but it's disabled by default. Uh, if you miss any of the commands or don't remember them, there's a whole bunch of them here. I don't use most of these, but uh, you can see them by doing dot help. All of SQLite special commands start with a dot. Um, there's even directory changing. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do with this uh, little binary here. The other thing is quitting. I quit SQLite by doing control D, uh, but you can also quit it by do it, typing dot quit. That is also another command there. Does it also do dot exit? Oh, dot exit also works. Um, so those are, those are kind of the three ways to quit out of SQLite. Uh, so now I want to talk about what SQLite is good for. The first and foremost, at least for me, is for prototyping things. I find SQLite a really good lightweight uh, utility to spin up a database. You don't even have to spin up anything because it's <laughs> it's literally just a flat file. Uh, but you can have a database that's really easy to set up, uh, really easy to test out an idea. Maybe you want to build a small website and you know, want to see what a database would look like behind it. It's really good for prototyping. Uh, it's also really good for read-only storage. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but SQLite actually doesn't do that well with multiple writers. Uh, and it's really good for embedded situations. So imagine like 
I don't know, well, I don't have my phone on me, but imagine like a mobile application where you need to store some data directly on the phone. Maybe you want to store it in a relational store. Maybe you need to do joins or some other fancy stuff. And rather than inventing your own serialization format for that, why not use a database that's really good at these things and really good at joining and selecting that data later? And SQLite is really easy to put into a mobile app such that you can uh, select data out there. Now, I want to talk about what it's not good for. And the, the big one is multiple writers. Uh, SQLite, the way it handles concurrency for writing is it locks the entire database. So, and it, and it doesn't block, it doesn't wait for anything. It just errors if you try and do multiple writes. So for instance, if I do, I don't know, seq110, xargs, uh, run five processes, uh, replace out a string, sqlite3, database.db, insert into wat values, whatever our value is here. Uh, so this will try and insert the values one to 10, uh, but it'll do five processes at once. And I think some of these should fail. Yeah, so you can see here, error in prepare database is locked. And if we then uh, select star from wet, we can see that only one of the values successfully got inserted. So um, yeah, basically SQLite locks the database and it's not good in a, in a multiple writer situation. Uh, the other thing that SQLite is not great for is distributed systems. Now, there's a little asterisk here because there are some forks or uh, special uses of SQLite and distributed systems where people have, you know, built a, uh, a protocol such that, you know, you can have sharded SQLite or you can have multiple replicas of SQLite. They have basically turned it into a real database engine, but with the very simplistic implementation underneath it. Uh, I've also seen some distributed systems that use SQLite as their, uh, as their, eventually consistent data. So basically they write to a central place and then they replicate the entire database file to all of their hosts. Uh, this can be really useful if you have very few writes, uh, but you you know, are, are mostly reading. So like say you build an index set of data and you can pop that on a machine and query it really quickly. Uh, the other thing that SQLite doesn't do all that well for, although they do claim that you can make a SQLite database that's 281 terabytes, uh, having a machine that has 281 terabytes of space is maybe another question. Uh, but I find that it's not that great for extremely large databases because it must be in one file and it must be on one machine. So this can be a bit of a bit of a problem there. Uh, but lastly, I wanna talk about why I like SQLite. Uh, and first and foremost is that it's widely available. So, you know, there's this SQLite command line utility, which you're probably not gonna use if you're actually developing against this. Uh, but most programming languages have good bindings for this. So for instance, uh, Python has a SQLite library built in. Uh, so you can you know, directly connect to a, a flat file store and play around with that directly in Python. Ruby has one too, probably node libraries. There's probably, you know, most programming languages will have this readily available. The other thing I like about SQLite is it's dead simple stupid. It has very few features out of the box, and so it is a very, very basic database engine. This makes it really good for teaching database engines, uh, but it also, you know, it limits you a lot, so you try and make things as simple as possible rather than leaning on more complicated features that you might get out of like Postgres or something else. Uh, I actually have used SQLite in a, in a few places, and I wanted to show off a few places that it gets used in the Python community because it's so convenient. Uh, the first of those is coverage, and this isn't my stuff, but uh, coverage is a uh, utility which I've done a video on. There's no way I'm going to remember to put that in the video description, but if I do, maybe it will be there. Um, but coverage is implemented in SQLite. They store, well, the current implementation. <laughs> Previous versions were not, and future versions may not be as well. Um, but coverage stores all of its data inside of a little SQLite database. This is really convenient because it makes it really easy to query this and poke around at the, um, at the actual coverage data or if you need to do special stuff to it. Um, I happen to know it's a database, didn't tabulate for whatever reason. Uh, but if we you know, look at schema here, you can see that there's information for tracers, arcs, et cetera. The comments are even in here. Uh, it's pretty accessible and really easy to understand like, how how coverage is built from this, and you can manipulate this data. 
Uh, one thing that, oops, <laughs> the command line's a little bit fiddly with control C. It doesn't quite read line properly here, but that's a whole different thing. Another thing that I have written that uses SQLite is pre-commit. Uh, pre-commit, you know, this is implementation detail, so don't super depend on this, but uh, pre-commit stores all of its uh, hooks as, you know, built environments inside of this cache directory. And you'll notice there's a little db.db file here. This is used to keep track of where the actual repositories live on disk, as well as where your configurations live on disk. Uh, it used to be symlinks, but it didn't work so well for Windows, and so this was a convenient way to represent the same structure. Uh, also, it turns out that if your shebang is too long, then things don't work either, and so this prevented really, really deep, deep long paths, so it was another nice little win there. Um, and this is actually used so that you can do Pre-commit GC, which will garbage collect any of these any of these repos that are unused. So it knows all of the configurations you have on disk and can remove any of the ones that aren't referenced. Uh, another cool thing that I've built with SQLite is uh, my Twitch chatbot. Uh, it stores some amount of data based on actions that happen in chat, uh, and we store these here. So for instance, there's a... There's a way for you to donate bits that forces me to use Vim. We have a full text search for my uh, YouTube videos. There's a uh, message of the day, which people can set. There's today where I keep state about uh, what I'm working on. And, you know, keeping these around forever seems kind of cool. You can do select star from day and see exactly what I was working on on whatever day. So you can see if we scroll back all the way back to the... Uh, you know, in 2019, November, I was working on GitHub Actions for pre-commit way, way back when. Um, but, you know, this is kind of a, a cool little use of, of SQLite as well. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's SQLite. That's a little intro to it, why I like it, why you might use it or not. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.